I am a dangerous faggot. <laughs> <laughs> I am so dangerous that universities in the United Kingdom, like Manchester, Durham, and York, have banned me from speaking, lest the student body experience a collective mental breakdown at the sight of somebody who, su who likes to spend time with gentlemen um, <laughs> in an affectionate and intimate way. Um, <laughs> she told me I couldn't say sucks dick. Um, <laughs> Uh, but doesn't believe that the state should take 75% of my earnings and spend them on fe uh, feminism slam poetry societies and pro-Palestinian community theatre. Anna Solkowitz at Columbia didn't happen. Jackie Coakley, UVA, didn't happen. The Duke Lacrosse case didn't happen. And more and more we're discovering actually that the great progressive um, sort of gold standard cases are in fact hoaxes and they're either perpetrated by attention seekers or in the case of many of the swastikas that appear on campus, um, they're perpetrated by the left as in, in a, in a, um, to try to sort of drum up sympathy for a movement that is losing sympathy with the public. Now um, the great Douglas Murray, who's a British journalist you should know, says that the left has, um, yes he's very good, you should read him, the left has a supply and demand problem with bigotry. So there, isn't, there aren't enough racists to go around, there aren't enough sexists to go around, there aren't enough homophobes to go around, so the left has to invent some more. And all it does is it either looks really, really hard, or it enlarges the definition of some bigotry, or it simply makes stuff up. And very often, um, the things you'll hear about that sound horrific on campus are simply made up. What? <laughs> what have you turned into? <laughs> what have you turned I into? I used to be such you're a nice kind of, young man. Well, you Hard did. You're, 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 some, you're a kind it's... of furor of the furious now. <laughs> You, you're sort of a major it's general of misogyny. It's what? hard to believe, isn't it, that this... Uh, well, why this have your army reacted like that? You can't support those comments. No, of course not, but here's the thing. I understand why Kate doesn't understand how fame works, but I do. Um, and the thing is, you know, I'm not particularly interested in a professional provocateur who goes out and says deliberately outrageous things, like I do, turning around and then playing the victim when she doesn't like uh, ridicule or criticism I don't afterwards. Say anything outrageous. Ridicule, I let me finish. I let you finish. Rights. I let you finish, so stop. Um, you know, no. after um, she lost the debate, as feminists very often do these days, because they've got facts on their side, um, you know, she turned around and she did what feminists always do, which is confect a sob story. Now, Kate is, like me, a professional provocateur, but only one of us no, plays the victim afterwards. True. Now, it's interesting, um, you know, if we get back to the question, it's interesting that, um, you know, that, that it's even being framed like this at all. Because what the research shows, the Pew Global data from 2014 shows, is that actually it's men who get more abuse online than women. It is no, men it who get more uh, death threats. It's men who get more violent threats. This, the only thing that women beat men at, and this is Pew Global data, is the gold standard of research. The only thing that women beat men in is, st is cyber stalking. And guess what? A lot of the people doing the stalking are other women. What social media it's shows not true, isn't, isn't that men hate women, it's that women hate everyone. Okay. It lacks people who don't fear you. Well, the rise of, of speakers like me and of Donald Trump, even if you don't agree with all of his policies, although I'm guessing some people in this room do. Um, um, the wall. Enough for you on build the wall, sir, yes. Um, <laughs> the rise of these candidates demonstrates something, and it's that um, American people are tired of being told that they're racist when they're not. They're tired of being told that they're sexist when they're not. They're tired of being told they're homophobic when they're not. They're tired of being told they're transphobic and they don't even know what that means. Um, <laughs> they're tired... They're tired of, of people who want to um, regulate and, uh, and control how we live, what we read, what we listen to, how we speak, who we are, the way that we relate to the rest of the world. And I think Americans have had enough of this now. I think Americans have had enough of the bogus allegations from the protesters outside. If you take all of the money that women earn and all of the money that men earn, and you do a simple sort of division, you will arrive at a figure of, let's say, 79 cents on the dollar. The problem with this is that it is babyish economics of the childish kind that only the progressive left could possibly believe in. The problem with this stuff is it doesn't take into account the different choices that women make. It doesn't take into account the fact that women tend to work shorter hours, they have babies, they do all sorts of other things that mean that um, it's not an, apples for apple, it's not a, an oranges to oranges comparison.
Now, the problem with the wage gap is it's used to suggest that if a woman goes into the workplace, she's going to be paid 79 cents for the same work as a man. Well, that confuses wages with earnings. So if you believe that there's a wage gap, I would encourage you to return to the dictionary and learn what wages mean. Because it is illegal to pay a man and a woman differently for the same work. And in fact, it doesn't happen. Well, black, black, so I wrote an article about this last year called Minority Wars. And I said that the identity of Minority Wars. Minority Wars, that yeah. Was great, it'd, it'd be an amazing board game. Yeah, it'd be an amazing <laughs> board game. You know? you'd, you'd go, you'd, it'd, be like, it'd be like Monopoly, except you'd collect oppression points. Mm-hmm. And there'd be a sort of um, um, hierarchy of victory. I'm feeling it, yeah. No, no, no. Honestly, no I really honestly, am. Like, actually, like, Minority Wars, the game. Yeah. But huge. Christmas 2016. It's going to okay, be massive. So are you saying that Muslims are more oppressed than black people? Uh, according to the progressive stack, oh, Muslims are the most pro- most oppressed group of all. Man, that is bizarre. Because they're the ultimate cry bullies. Mm-hmm. You know, they take down skyscrapers and then complain that somebody said fucking packy. You know, they can they you know they blow up buildings and then complain because so there was an incident of hijab pulling in Malmo. You know, um, <laughs> no, uh, there, there are three there are three related terms here that uh, I don't think have very much to do with one another. There's courtesy, there's racism, and there's political correctness. Now, courtesy uh, describes a set of codes that we all use to navigate the world successfully and to communicate with one another. The reality is that we're all a little bit sexist and we're all a little bit racist. Um, Everybody is to a larger and lesser extent. Now, the left believes, the left believes that you can, the left believes that you can stamp that out by policing language. They think that if you change the words you use for things, that you can change reality. Well, you can't. You can't make people unracist by banning the N-word. You can't stop people being homophobic by banning school children from using the word gay in the playground. That's not how it works. So the purpose of a civilized society is for all, us, for all of us to enable, to, to enable all of us to live together in harmony and to communicate with one another and to um, successfully build businesses and have personal rela- interpersonal relationships with one another despite our limitations and our bigotries and not to try to, to stamp them out. ...actively works against the interests of women. I mean, look at the, look at the transgender issue, for instance. We don't need to get into you know, whether you believe that you know, particular surgery is the right treatment pathway, which is completely forbidden to discuss. But look at what happens in the Olympics or in MMA fighting, where feminists are insisting that men who have rec- who recently announced themselves as women must be treated as though they were biological women at all costs, or you're a bigot and you deserve to die. Um, um, and these people go into these fights and beat the crap out of women. Um, you know, these are effectively men beating up women um, for sport, and they're allowed to do that by a sort of feminism that has privileged, um, you know, uh, transgender people over actual women um, to the point where a man won Woman of the Year. Uh, you know, Caitlyn Jenner won Glamour Magazine's Woman of the Year. I mean, you know, I thought it, she looked it's good. A, well, she looked good, but it's almost an admission by feminism that, that you know. Women can't even win that. Um, (laughs) Let's let's talk briefly through the the politically correct prescriptions of our age. Does anyone here believe that women are paid less than men for the same work? Put your hand up. (laughs) Everyone who puts their hands up, you're idiots. Um, Does anyone here believe that there is a pervasive culture of rape that means that American university campuses have higher rates of sexual assault than the Congo? More than one in five women being sexually assaulted. (laughs) Does anybody believe that about American campuses? Anybody? No? Fewer idiots on that one. Good. Well, that's something. These claims based on advocacy research, repeated by credulous journalists, are designed to do one thing. They're designed to push a particular political ideology on you that is divisive, hateful, bigoted, in many cases racist, in many cases sexist, and is simply not very much fun. And I like fun, so I want to talk to you a little bit about free speech and how free speech can be fun. Thank you. You did this poll online. Um, yes, it is. You, you, yep. What would you rather your child had, feminism or cancer? Yep. And uh, 22,000 people voted, and people voted in favour of cancer. That's a good statistic. Uh, now, thing. What, what the <laughs> statistics show us is that in just two years, the number of women who identify as a feminist in the US has gone from 28 to 18 percent. The number of uh, British women who identify as feminist has slumped to an all-time low of 7 percent. Why? Because, because, these the, because these are the because these are the kinds of representatives of feminism: professional provocateurs who play the victim after the fact, and professors of science journalism 
who misrepresent, deliberately misrepresent statements by Nobel Prize winning scientists in an attempt to end their career, who repeatedly it's lie to journalists, it's not true. repeatedly lie to journalists, BuzzFeed, The true. Daily Beast, the BBC, oh all of them have had to issue corrections. All of them you're a liar. All of them have had to issue corrections over statements you made. People can just look this up. And this, and this of course, and this of course is a professor a professor of science journalism who fabricated her C V as well.